I'm so impressed. I really didn't expect this many of you to be back in your seats. Well done. You follow directions. Very good. I hope you had a good lunch, good conversation, advanced the cause of democracy, and took in the art exhibits. Now back to content. We are going to hear now from the newly elected president of the Czech Republic, Petr Pavel. He will talk to you about defending global values. I'll be back in a moment to have a conversation with him, but first, his remarks. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, it's an honor uh, to be invited uh, to Copenhagen Democracy Summit and have a chance to talk to all of you here. Uh, in fact, uh, I have to say that uh, wherever I am invited uh, to have a uh, kind of a keynote speech, I uh, am a little bit hesitant because it uh, in, uh, looks like uh, as if uh, I have something of a key importance to say. I would rather uh, share uh, with you uh, a couple of my uh, comments on the situation and developments uh, uh, on uh, uh, the atmosphere in uh, which uh, we live in, uh, in uh, recent years and uh, today. First, uh, if uh, someone uh, told me um, more than 30 years ago uh, at the fall of communism and uh, Warsaw Pact, that uh, uh, 30 years on, uh, we will be in the midst of uh, the worst uh, uh, military conflict uh, since the Second World War, I would have found it um, extremely difficult uh, to believe it. But uh, here we are, uh, and uh, uh, there is a great uh, risk uh, of a conflict uh, involving uh, not uh, just uh, two neighboring countries, but uh, one uh, uh, nuclear uh, power uh, uh, with uh, another big country with the risk uh, of uh, extension to a number of other countries. So uh, it is uh, quite um, a serious uh, si situation which uh, we uh, cannot ignore. And it's not uh, just a conflict uh, for uh, a territory uh, or uh, any minor dispute. Uh, it is uh, a conflict. Uh, that is significant uh, for uh, uh, our own future, and not just in Europe, but also uh, globally. Uh, because uh, this conflict, uh, or uh, its result, will define uh, the world uh, security uh, architecture uh, and uh, the nature of international relations uh, in general. Uh, these uh, 30 years ago, uh, in uh, Czechoslovakia, we, we were uh, so uh, keen uh, to uh, get uh, back to Europe, as we called it, uh, look for security guarantees uh, provided by NATO uh, and uh, a good future provided uh, by membership in the EU. And we were all uh, very excited uh, and, uh, in a very bright uh, future. It was uh, similar uh, for uh, Russia. Even Russia started uh, modernizing in their own way. They started uh, getting closer uh, to uh, the West, uh, uh, creating uh, links uh, even with NATO. Uh, uh, there were even discussions about uh, possible Russian membership uh, in, in NATO. And everything uh, looked uh, pretty promising. Uh, but uh, uh, at the turn of the millennium, uh, uh, Russia uh, turned uh, back uh, to uh, what uh, uh, we saw uh, and uh, knew in times of uh, Soviet Union. That means uh, in their uh, pursuit uh, for uh, the greatness, uh, uh, quite uh, revengeist uh, positions and ideas. Uh, uh, when uh, Vladimir Putin replaced uh, uh, President Yeltsin, uh, he replaced uh, hope, uh, hopes for uh, democratic Russia uh, by uh, a great and powerful Russia. Uh, so he uh, gave uh, uh, Russians, after uh, the years of uh, perceived humiliation, uh, and uh, again the hope uh, for a respectful uh, big country uh, that uh, will be feared uh, by uh, all others and uh, that uh, will be again uh, consulted in all global issues. And uh, uh, we saw it first uh, uh, in a very open way in 2007 uh, uh, when uh, President uh, Putin uh, attended uh, Munich Security Conference uh, where he clearly uh, expressed his uh, view of uh, Russia in the uh, international arena uh, uh, in uh, uh, the interest uh, to uh, get back uh, to the positions of uh, the Soviet Union. 
And then, uh, then uh, uh, we saw the, the situation developing uh, uh, with regard uh, to uh, uh, Ukraine and many other uh, post-Soviet countries, resulting in uh, the annexation of uh, Crimea. That uh, should have been a, a good uh, reason for all of us uh, to wake up uh, and to realize that uh, cooperation and partnership uh, with Russia will probably not be so smooth as uh, we expected. Uh, but uh, uh, it seemed that uh, the low-cost uh, raw materials uh, were uh, to us closer uh, than uh, uh, caution. Uh, Central and Eastern Europe uh, had uh, their own experience uh, with Russia, so uh, we were probably uh, more cautious uh, than the, the others. But uh, generally, uh, the perception was that we can still uh, make a good deal with Russia, that we can uh, uh, cooperate and find, uh, uh, find a common way ahead. Now, it all ended up uh, in February last year uh, when uh, Russia started uh, an aggression against sovereign U Ukraine. And we see uh, now Russia uh, uh, behaving uh, almost uh, like uh, Nazi Germany uh, eight years ago, uh, focusing on civilian targets, uh, committing a, a lot of atrocities uh, in Ukraine, uh, killing civilians uh, and uh, committing uh, war crimes. Uh, for these, uh, Russia uh, should be, uh, should be uh, trialed, uh, and uh, that's why uh, we uh, call for uh, an establishment of international uh, tribunal special uh, for uh, war crimes in, in Ukraine, because uh, these uh, crimes uh, must not uh, uh, stay unpunished. Uh, beyond uh, Russia, which is uh, our common challenge, and uh, we agreed on that uh, at the NATO summit in Madrid, uh, we see also a number of other uh, challenges. And uh, one of them, uh, in my view, much more important than, uh, than Russia, much, much more dangerous in the long term, is China. Uh, up to now, uh, we were uh, brought to, to an understanding um, by China itself, but uh, also by many uh, our politicians, that uh, China uh, only uh, seeks uh, uh, economic cooperation, uh, investments, uh, and a good life for all of us. Uh, it's uh, fair to say uh, that uh, China has fundamentally different strategic interests from ours. Chinese uh, society is based on uh, uh, fundamentally different values than ours. And China, uh, China uh, in uh, that respect, is not uh, seeking uh, uh, equal cooperation uh, with equal partners, but it, it's seeking uh, a global dominance. Uh, China, uh, unlike uh, our countries, uh, has uh, several advantages. Uh, first, uh, is a very tight uh, central control of uh, their uh, society and economy. And uh, they also have a strategic patience. Uh, as, uh, for us, uh, uh, we usually work in uh, uh, election cycles, uh, usually four years. For China, uh, it's decades. And we see uh, how uh, good they are in pursuing their long-term strategies uh, in terms of education, economy, finances, uh, and so on. So uh, we uh, should be uh, very uh, cautious in uh, uh, watching what China is doing uh, in terms of uh, investments uh, to our uh, critical infrastructure into uh, 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 third countries, uh, both in Africa and Latin America. Uh, exploiting uh, their uh, raw materials uh, and uh, leaving uh, no technology, no development uh, behind. China is also threatening uh, part uh, of uh, one China, but uh, two systems, and that's Taiwan. And uh, China is very open in declaring uh, that uh, they aim uh, for uh, reunification of China uh, by any, any means, uh, including military. Uh, we, um, in most our countries, uh, respect uh, one China policy. In Czech Republic, we have uh, our own one China policy. Uh, but uh, as it is uh, uh, interpreted by China, uh, uh, it is uh, one China, one system. But we still understand it that there are two systems that should be preserved. Uh, Czech Republic has a great uh, cooperation with Taiwan in a number of areas, uh, and we want uh, to, to keep it as it is. Uh, we want to share the same values and the same level, uh, same level of cooperation. Uh, 
different uh, scenario uh, uh, which uh, would involve uh, military action against China would uh, threaten uh, not uh, all of the principles on which our uh, societies are built on, but also uh, internationally uh, recognized rules-based uh, order uh, and uh, China imposing uh, their own uh, perception of international order uh, on, uh, on us. We would also see uh, the disruption to uh, the world trade because uh, not just uh, that uh, Taiwan is a producer of a uh, great uh, amount of uh, critical commodities, but also a number of uh, uh, trade uh, and commercial uh, lanes uh, run through uh, South China Sea and around uh, Taiwan. So uh, all of these uh, aspects uh, should be a warning sign to all of us when it comes uh, to China. Uh, uh, I would uh, try to end up uh, by uh, saying that uh, the only way uh, how the democratic world uh, can, uh, can face uh, authoritarian regimes uh, like Russia and China, uh, who are now pretending to be strategic partners, uh, is uh, to stay united. Not just within the EU, not just between uh, the allies in Europe and North America, but also uh, uh, extending our cooperation with all democratic uh, countries around the world. Uh, in uh, in the Pacific, uh, um, also with India, but also extending our cooperation uh, with uh, an African and Latin American countries, being uh, still uh, well uh, based in values, but being also uh, pragmatic uh, in offering cooperation wherever possible, because uh, uh, if uh, we uh, leave any space uh, open, it will be uh, quickly filled by Russia or China. Uh, to, and they will then shape uh, uh, these countries uh, to uh, their liking. So if we want uh, to preserve uh, the world uh, where uh, the rules matter, not uh, the bigger stick, then uh, we should uh, really stay together, work together and be uh, more uh, pragmatic, more flexible in uh, cooperation with all uh, the willing countries. Thank you. So you ended with China, let me start with that. When you were elected, one of the first calls you made was to the Taiwanese president, Tsai Ing-wen. Why was that your choice? What did you say to her? What was your message? It was uh, the other way around. Uh, she called me. Oh, she called you? Yes. Oh, that's interesting. And, of course, and what was her message for you? Well, uh, congratulations and uh, will to cooperate and uh, to keep uh, good relations. Of course, um, as a uh, um, man, I uh, cannot refuse a call from a, a lady, so uh, that was uh, one thing. And the other uh, is uh, that uh, uh, I really believe that uh, wherever we have a good relationship with a democratic country, uh, we sh shouldn't get uh, threatened by anyone. Uh, and since we are a sovereign country, uh, we want to uh, maintain our contacts and business uh, with uh, the partners of our choice. Uh, that was the uh, main reason. So it's good for me to know that you'll always take my call. So that's great. Um, you just used an interesting phrase here. You talked about Russia and China pretending to be strategic partners. Why the word pretending? Because their uh, interest uh, is uh, now uh, common for a while uh, with regard to the West, but uh, in the long run, uh, China uh, um, is uh, obviously uh, much bigger uh, and uh, much stronger than Russia. Uh, and uh, they see Russia as a cheap source of uh, raw materials. Uh, and a uh, temporary partner uh, against uh, the West. Otherwise, uh, in a long, longer term, uh, they will be competitors, especially uh, for uh, the living space in Far East. Uh, China is now using it uh, quite extensively. Uh, they, uh, China is, uh, in fact, abusing the situation with Russia because uh, if um, uh, it were a strategic partner, uh, uh, they wouldn't probably uh, uh, cut uh, to the bone uh, the cost of uh, oil and gas uh, which they buy from Russia. Uh, I, I truly believe that chi China is simply uh, using the situation. Uh, uh, China benefits uh, from uh, Russia uh, becoming weaker, 
China also uh, benefits uh, from uh, watching us uh, with regard to what we uh, do uh, in support of Ukraine. China is learning uh, from uh, the whole situation uh, uh, with regard to, uh, first uh, to Taiwan and potentially to global uh, uh, competition. And what do you think the big lesson is that they're learning? China? Yeah. China has learned that, From uh, Ukraine. that under pressure we are able uh, to be uh, united uh, quite quickly. Uh, but uh, they also learned uh, that uh, we have uh, some uh, difficulties uh, in uh, uh, pr pr providing direct uh, support from uh, the very beginning. Uh, um, just look at uh, how long did it take uh, uh, that uh, major European countries uh, started uh, supporting Ukraine by heavy equipment. Uh, so uh, they uh, learned uh, that uh, we, we need some time uh, and uh, we prefer uh, not uh, to sacrifice too much. The Chinese are now suggesting that they would be an excellent mediator in Ukraine. Do you buy it? No, not at all. Uh, they had a chance uh, to prove it. Uh, they didn't use the chance. Uh, China uh, uh, should uh, they have uh, um, serious interest uh, to uh, stop the conflict. They could have done it a uh, uh, couple of uh, weeks or months after uh, the, uh, the start of the conflict. Up to now, uh, they uh, proposed a plan, a uh, very generic one, uh, but um, they didn't push for it at all. Uh, they simply presented it uh, to present something, but uh, I, I don't see any uh, real uh, um, effort uh, to come to an agreement. Uh, Even though they're hopscotching around Europe this week? Well, still, uh, still, uh, it, it is um, uh, too um, too weak uh, and uh, too, uh, as I say, broad. Uh, um, hopefully, it will bring something, uh, but it takes uh, uh, a long time. President Zelensky has also been doing a lot of traveling this week, and he's got something to show for it. Germany has just ponied up another three billion dollars in aid. Britain has now said they will give Ukraine long-range missiles. Um, what do you think about these new pledges of support? And is it enough for the time being or not? Well, uh, President Zelensky and Ukraine will probably be grateful for any contribution. Uh, but we have to ask uh, ourselves the question, um, uh, is it uh, right uh, on time? Uh, Ukraine uh, has a chance uh, to launch a significant counteroffensive uh, this summer. And the window is shrinking now. So uh, the later uh, the contribution come, uh, the less uh, useful uh, they will be because uh, uh, in uh, the fall uh, it will be again stopped to uh, large military operations because of uh, weather conditions and ground condition. So uh, uh, to, to use uh, properly the time window that is available, uh, we should have uh, uh, provided Ukraine with all necessary uh, equipment and ammunition uh, in the springtime latest. But Europe isn't producing that ammunition that they need. Talk to me, if you would, about your solution to this production problem when it comes to armaments. Well, it's not so difficult. Uh, uh, there are still production lines, uh, especially in uh, the countries of Central and Eastern Europe, uh, uh, who have uh, the capacity uh, to produce more. They probably don't have enough uh, uh, workforce for it, but uh, when I visited Ukraine uh, two weeks ago, uh, uh, I spoke to President Zelensky, who was uh, willing to provide that uh, missing workforce to uh, the companies. Then uh, uh, um, there is a lack of funding. Again, uh, a number of European countries have the funding, but not the capacity. It's about better coordination uh, to bring all uh, the possibilities and capacities together uh, and produce it very flexibly, very quickly. And if we don't have enough uh, production capability in Europe, there are a number of third countries uh, who still have uh, on stock uh, uh, lots of uh, Soviet era equipment. But then we have to be flexible to get it out of these countries and uh, transport it to, to Ukraine. I want to quickly ask you about Slovakia in your neighborhood. I understand you have concerns about what's happening there. Spell those out for us. Well, uh, on the one hand, uh, uh, Slovakia was lucky uh, to have an extremely uh, decent uh, president, uh, uh, very uh, you know, European-oriented, uh, values-oriented. But now, uh, uh, being frustrated uh, by uh, the impact of uh, economic crisis, energy crisis, and lots of uh, populist uh, propaganda, the population is uh, inclining back uh, to uh, former Prime Minister Robert Fico. 
uh, whose uh, uh, priority uh, are, uh, is, is different. Uh, he looks uh, you know, with admiration uh, to uh, Hungary, uh, to uh, Prime Minister Orban. Uh, he speaks about uh, restoring relations uh, with Russia uh, and, um, uh, and against uh, EU and uh, US, um, NATO. So uh, it is uh, um, quite a concern uh, not only to Slovakia but also to ourselves. And we have to leave it there. President Pavel, thanks so much for joining us today. Thank you. Appreciate it. <laughs>